Hello there, guys. Saxophone's Jamal Riley. <laughs> uh, this segment, I want to cover the actual body of the EV to show you what it, um, what all it looks like. Uh, first thing, just like with your actual saxophone or or clarinet for that example, for you clarinet players out there, <laughs> um, you have your mouthpiece cap. Put your mouthpiece cap off. I'm pretty sure you saw that um, previous video. This is your actual mouthpiece itself. Um, Next, you have your sensors. Now, if you look here, when you hold it's going to look like that. Now, if you notice right here, for my saxophone players, this is kind of, like I said, reminiscent of this B-flat, uh, the little small key under your, under your in left index. Um, and you can use it for that same purpose. Um, but it can be used for, I say, semi-additional purposes in the EWI, and I'll get into that in a minute. Notice you have two left uh, pinky keys. You have one that raises the pitch and one that lowers the pitch in your standard EWI finger. And I'll get into the fingers later. Um, so you have those two. You don't have a full, uh, I guess say some people call it a spatula, set of spatula keys, which is actually pretty helpful. So you don't have to worry about doing peaky work in your low B flat and your low B. You just go down an octave, and I'll show you that too. Okay. Also, your right hand, you're right here. Um, now, me as an oboe player can find this reminiscent. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the uh, C to D trill key um, for my oboe players out there. But as far as saxophone goes, you kind of you, you can kind of use this um, as your you know your your standard one two side B flat one two. That's your side right there. That's kind of awkward position, but you'll get used to it. Um, also, the good thing about it, not only can you use that for your B flat, but you also use that same key for your for your side C as well. So um, so that that still you you cut under that on that little blip that you get. Well, saxophone players go from one to two between B and C, so that also cuts down on that. Um, no, nextly, notice that you have three, three right finger pinky keys. Now, a saxophone player, you know, is not difficult. But uh, coming from the oboe standpoint, I'm used to three keys. It's all good. So what they do? This one is more so reminiscent of E flat. This one is more so like C. The one in the middle is more like a C sharp, which is kind of like the oboe set of seven in reverse. But anyway, um, C, C sharp, E flat. And so. So, C. C sharp. D. E flat. Now. For you clarinet players out here, um, I'll say that for later, uh, you can actually alternate the, these. Now, now clarinets have been limited to E flat strictly on the right hand side. And, you know, the situational fingers can get a little hairy. But any, anyway, um, you, have, you, have, you can do E flat right here, or you can do E flat right here. These, are, these two are interchangeable. Or you can even add them together. Now, uh, the current fingering system I'm using right now is the default EWI finger fingering system, and I'll explain to you the differences of, b between those in a minute. Okay? Uh, so you got so basically this raises the pitch up a half step, no, no. and that's not only on the D, but that's on any note. So suppose I was playing B. No. Now that's the actual dedicated one, but anyway, these two raise the pitch as well. Um, so now you know long, clarinet players are no longer limited to E flat on the right hand if they pick up an EV. Um, also, uh, these two are interchangeable. So likewise, now this lowers the pitch a half step. So, like I said, anywhere on the instrument. I know that may seem weird and possibly unnecessary to some, but trust me, when you get into certain keys in certain situations, having that knowledge <laughs> makes a difference. I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. Now, this last one is not interchangeable. This one, this one lowers it two, two pitches. So it's, um, you know. Now, now that's really handy in, 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 when you want to stop versus going down to the next order. Um, but uh all right. What 
that's the front. That's really that's really all on the front side. Now, when you turn right here, I have two small gray keys. Now you press them, they light up. Well, it's, it's kind of really just transparent. The first one is called the hold function. The second one is the octave function. Now, for my seasoned synth players, what that means is, you know, if I press the second one, I get, I get the sound not just one note, but I get an octaves. Now that's my just me playing in general, but suppose I want to put put it in octaves. Okay, so now I got my octaves. Now the whole function is pretty cool, but it takes a little getting used to. Now, as I said again, uh, it is a wind synthesizer. Um, now you really can't chord on an Ewe, but you can play two notes at, at once. And how that works is, when I push the hold function, whatever note you start playing, it'll hold it while you move on. So normally, sound like this. Just a little G arpeggio. Put the hold function on. So, notice I had two notes playing. Although the second note doesn't move, it does re it does respond to your breath. Um, how how much how much air in, how much air output you're putting in, it does respond. So for like this. So if I start playing soft, if I start playing soft, they both both notes will come down. The initial note and the current note will both come down, and they both go up. Okay. Uh, Nextly, as you see, obviously it is on a on a on a on a neck strap hook. Let's take it around the back side. Now we're gonna start from the bottom. We're gonna start from the bottom. Let me turn this guy off real quick because I don't want it popping. Uh, for those of you who don't know who may be new to playing um, instruments that have to be plugged in, most of my bands, my band guys and orchestra guys who might want to pick up pick up an Ewe. Uh, you want to turn your amp off before you remove the jack or it's going to start popping and, and that's not very good. Uh, anyway, so let's start with the bottom. Right here is basically a flathead screw where, where the um, you unscrew it and the, you put your batteries in. I don't have a screw a screwdriver on hand right now to open it up. But, um, I mean, it's like every other, every other electronic. Open the battery door, stick the batteries in, close it, just like that. Um, also, right here... This little thing right here is actually your quartz stabilizer. So, because uh, what it is, you have your quarter inch, quarter inch input right here. So when it's time to plug up, plug it in right there. Now what it is, now this is kind of just freely hanging in, and some people find that cord annoying um, to just be hanging around there in front of your body. I'll be honest with you, it doesn't really bother me. But uh, anyway, a lot of guys, they'll, now I got a, uh, performance cable that is not really bending uh, in a manner which uh, I could do it like this so basically let me get that in there real quick mm. so basically they'll, they'll do something like this or well, if they got a more flexible cord it'll bend easier they'll stick it in there so that also give you a little leeway so if your cord is laying around and somebody steps on it it won't rub to your jack uh, that could be a headache on any input you know, so that's that's actually that's actually something pretty good. Now, right above, right above the quarter inch, you have your eighth inch. That's where you stick your headphones at. And right here, you have your you have your MIDI in, your MIDI out, both five pins. Um, that's where you basically use a MIDI um, a MIDI cord to connect. In order to connect something to control something else with this, you connect the MIDI out. You connect the MIDI out here into the MIDI end of whatever you're trying to control, be it another keyboard, a, v, a VST, or, or a sound module, okay? Now, right above this is your ground plate. Now, on the Ewe, which actually, now, notice that I'm using a neck strap. Now, the Ewe is pretty lightweight. It is pretty lightweight compared to um, your alto saxophone or even a soprano saxophone. It's actually more comparable to a clarinet, I guess, as far as weight goes. 
Uh, but the thing is, you don't have a thumb rest on here. So you still need an extra for balance. Um, so what you do, you put your right thumb inside the thumb plate. And on on the iwi, um, unlike the saxophone, you don't you don't bend your notes. You don't bend your notes with your mouth. You actually have these two plates right here. These two plates right here. I'm trying to get this light right. And these two plates right here where you rub your, your thumb from either here or here. And that bends the pitch. So an example. Well, I mean, I can't show you why I'm doing it, but. Uh-oh. Got to turn my speaker on. Uh, here we go. So this is me bending, going from the ground plate to the pitch bend plates. Okay. See, the wonderful thing about this is now saxophone, you can you can bend down by kind of dropping your jaw. You can't really bend up unless you just start down and bring it bring it up. So, but you know you gotta fake it on saxophone. But on here, you do it for real. So with my thumb. Uh oh, what's going on here? Here we go. No? Oh, silly me. Forgot to plug it in. Oh, see, that's what I was talking about earlier. Make sure it's not on while you're plugging in or unplugging. But here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so you got um, you got your ground plate. Now if we're ready to do it this time. See, even in my introductory video, I use that. But I do this right here. I bend it down, okay. And that's that's that comes in pretty comes in pretty handy, okay. All right, let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got on the butt on the back here. Um, we also now we also have these two white buttons right here. What this is, one of them is level, the other one is effects. And now on the EW four thousand S, you have um, effects built in to accompany your sound, such as delay and um, reverb, which I find very, 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 very very helpful um and during performance especially in church um i'm primarily a, a gospel musician you know that's you'll find me in, you'll find me in church <laughs> find me in church using my gifts for god but um what it is uh on your on your more soft and mellow type stuff you'll find it uh you'll find it pretty helpful now this is a sound i use pr predominantly that has has a good bit of reverb on it, as well as as well as um, your delay. You hear that? So you see how I how, how you got your reverb and your delay in effect. You can even you can even I mean just for practice purposes, just for fun. <laughs> kind of playing with yourself, playing by yourself. Um, but yes. Uh, nextly, we have our setup keys. Uh, we use these for setups, but really. One of the biggest transitions that you have to get used to between going between a, 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 a standard woodwind instrument, um, especially saxophone, I guess, say, because I come from that perspective, is this right here. Uh, your octave, these are called octave rollers. Now, unlike on the saxophone, when you play the saxophone, you normally have, uh, you have your left thumb on octave key, and maybe on the rest, or the, yeah, maybe on the rest. And when you get ready to a certain note, you know to hit it. You push it down, you let it go. You push it down, you let it go. Simple as that. But on the iwi, you can't. You move your thumb up and down, so you're moving it while you're playing. 
And that brings again brings a perspective why you need an next chapter to help balance it because you're not you're not truly holding it. You're using your thumbs to control it as well. Now, my background as a bassoon player, I definitely understand that. But um, you, the unlike unlike a keyboard or, or a keyboard instrument where if I press the send, press the send note, like that's a D, that's a D, that's a D. You know, you press you press the key to make the sound. On the, we all know wind instruments make sounds by finger combinations, such as one and two is A, one and three is G, one, two, three, four, five is E. So if all my fingers are controlling what note it is, the thumb has to control what octave it is. So like I said, it has several rollers back here, that's what controls the octave. See, sometimes it may sound like, like if we play a switch sounds, but it ain't actually switch sounds, they just simply switch the octaves. So, so just to demonstrate. So, octave rollers. Now, honestly, fresh out the box, this is going to be the most challenging part of playing this. Uh, when I first got my Iwi, um, back in February 2013, um, the, I spent my first two, three hours just working on scales. I can't stress the importance of that. Uh, work on your scales. It'll, it'll help ease that transition because the transition is, it's just like on the saxophone where, where you go from your, your bottom G, G, A, B, C, and then you normally hit your octave key on that fourth line D. That's where you normally hit it. Well, on that fourth line, in that sense, that's where your next octave begins. So you got, so if I go like this, I'm gonna start on low, I'm gonna start on D, and I'm gonna move it on the next octave. And see, also another challenge is playing C sharp sometimes, because you know, like I said, it's not really as supportive as a saxophone is because the, the weight of a saxophone kind of holds it down. Except plus, your your right thumb is on a hook versus a you know ground plate. But you know, uh, one thing I can say in my experience of, of playing the Ewe, playing the Ewe has kind of made me more you have to be more clean with it, which are more precise with your fingers. Because also, if you you met because unlike on a saxophone, when you mess around, sometimes you can press certain keys by accident and it won't make a sound. No matter what you press on, 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 on the front or any side, it's going to make a difference. So suppose I'm playing A. If I mess around and hit any of these keys down here, or even, even on my pinkies, it's going to make a difference. So my point is, we, we have to be very clean on what uh, what fingerings, uh, well not what fingerings, but what we rub my fingers across because um, these sensors, these are sensors, oh, okay. notice that these are not moving parts. These are not moving parts. It doesn't move at all. And that's another thing that kind of feels weird in the, in the, in the very first beginning of playing it because on saxophone you, or any wind instrument, again, <laughs> with the exception of your right, your, your left, your left, uh, your left ring finger on clarinet, you know, you're used to something moving, something giving you just a little bit of feeling resistance versus just bare air like a, uh, elementary school recorder but um this doesn't move at all and I, I think that's pretty smart on Makai's part um uh, being that because of the moving parts it's easy to, to want to to back up the product stand behind it less moving parts less problems you're gonna have but um basically this works because the, these uh me, these metal sensors sense your fingers on it and even, I mean you don't if I put any part it, it picks it up so you have to be very, very, very careful. And a common problem is messing around and touching this. Uh, I guess I said earlier, like the B, the B S B flat. You don't want to mess around and rub that guy from from moving or getting too excited. You can mess around and rub that and you know, throw your sound off. But you know, uh, you can play it off. Now, lastly, on the um, Ewe's body is this cap back here. It has a little uh, cap. And you have seven controls. These controls um, control the vibrato, um, how much um, air it takes 
to produce a tone. Now that's one thing about this. Um, that's 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 better than uh that's easier than saxophone is um you don't necessarily have to put as much air. It doesn't take as much air because like your reeds determine what strength, how much air it's gonna take for you to play on a saxophone or clarinet or an oboe or a bassoon. <laughs> Um, you can you can turn the resistance up or down to however you, however you need it to be. Now one thing, uh, and also you have you got your pitch being controls, your your uh, vibrato controls, and your breath controls, which is how sensitive. Now the last thing, now I'm not gonna go, really go into this too in depth, but my last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this little strip right here. This is your glide strip. So, uh, I know you probably hear guys doing this. I do it quite often. You know, I just showed you we have a whole bunch of octaves to work with. Well, we also can glide it down. We also can glide it up, too. So, what that is, I slide through my octaves. But I, well, what I do, I scoop my thumb over some more to make to hit this plate right here. And this plate right here... This gliding, gliding strip works just like these sensors. So when you're moving, it's, it's kind of like, it's really, and, and even in small intervals, it's kind of like your equivalent of, of slurring. It's like. So it helps make things smooth. In small octaves, but in bigger, not uh, small octaves, smaller intervals. In smaller intervals, it help makes things smooth. But uh, in bigger, um, in bigger scenarios, quite nice little glad. Now we can do it too, not just trombones. <laughs> but um, that's pretty cool. And uh, but uh, but bringing it back here, you have a glad control now. Your glad control, you can do it. Can do it extremely slow, or can just zip up and zip it down. I kind of got it semi medium. So that people get the, or at least our ears can get the effect without it seeming annoying. Um, but that's it. That's it as far as the Ewe body. Um, I hope that you found this, this video helpful. Um, until next time.